Okay, uh, Math 120 class, uh, th these several videos are going to be used to uh, prepare you for the two uh, common tests that we have. We call them midterm one and midterm two. And uh, so I'm going to go through all the questions uh, very slowly and carefully, and you should be together with what you're doing in class, obviously. This should help really prepare you to do super well on the, on the, on the tests. So let's get started. First question, I'll go right through the test, uh, practice test one. It says, uh, given these sets, you have a universal set which has 10 elements in it, and then the set A is everything from one to six, and the set B is everything from four to eight. And the first question we're asked is, what is the intersection of A and B? That's the symbol right there for the intersection. Intersection means and. It means to be in one and in the other. I want uh, a Coke and a hamburger, right? You want them both. So uh, that's what we want here. So we want everything that's in both A and B. The order isn't important, but what is important is that we get everything that's in both of them. So I notice that four, five, and six are in A and they're also in B. So that's the intersection. Four, five and six. So there you go. Uh, the second one is the difference or the complement A minus B. So A minus B is everything that is in set A which is not in set B. Okay so I want all the people I, in my party who happen to be here but who haven't done this, right? I want people who are in here, but who haven't, haven't, whatever. Um, so, um, so you want things that are in A, but not in B. So that would be what? One, two, three, because four, five, and six are also in B. So it'd be just one, two, and three. Okay, and again, it doesn't matter what order you make them. I could go two, three, one, or one, three, two. It doesn't matter. Okay, the next one is A union B, the complement of that. So it's the complement of A union B. Okay, so now we have to do two things. The first thing is to find the union. The union means or, okay? I want, um, I want a Coke or a root beer. Means you want one or the other, okay? Um, I want everyone at my party who's either been here or been here. If you've been in both places, that's fine. And so you want, you want everyone. So what's, what's the, first of all, what's A union B? So A union B is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then you've already got 4, 5, 6. There's no need to put them in there twice but you also have seven and eight. So there's the union of A and B. And then the complement of that means everything that's in my universal set, everything that's the overall set that you're dealing with here, everything that's in there, which is not in here. So the complement would be what? Just nine and 10, agreed? Just nine and 10. So there you go. Okay. Next one is the complement of A intersect the complement of B. So this uses all the ideas we've already been, been using. Let's first find the complement of A. Here's A right here. Um, that, well, we are already have A, so the complement of A is everything that's in the universal set which is not in A. By the way, if I wanted to, I could make a big picture of this whole thing here. So sometimes it's called a Venn diagram. Like here, and, and this is you. This is the set A. This is the set B. First of all, we want all the things that are in A and B. So the things that are in A and B are gonna be four, five, and six. So they're in both of them. Then you also have one, two, and three that are over here. 
and you have 7 and 8 that are over there, and then you have 9 and 10, which are out there someplace, right? They're, they're in none of the others. So a nice, a Venn, it's called a Venn diagram, helps you kind of capture everything all together. So anyway, A is all this stuff right here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that's all the stuff in A. And so the complement of A is all the things that are not in A. So that would be what? 7, 8, 9, and 10. So 7, 8, 9, and 10. That's the complement of A. What's the complement of B? Okay. Well, it's everything that's not in B. There's B right there. It's all this stuff. So all the things that are not in B would be 1, 2, and 3. And also 9 and 10, right? There you go. And now I want the intersection of these two sets, right? That's what that stands for. So that means I want things that are in both this one and this one. And that would be just 9 and 10. There you go. And notice that these two answers are the same. Is that a coincidence or is that always the case? And if you remember De Morgan's law, De Morgan had two laws. One of them was that the complement of the union is the intersection of the complements. And that's exactly what we have here. The, the complement of the union is the intersection of the complements. So if, if you happen to remember that, then you would have been able to get this one quickly because you'd know that those two have to give you the same thing. The other De Morgan's law is that the complement of the intersection is the union of the complements, okay? So those are both ones that uh, hopefully you, you remember from, from, um, from your class, okay? So there you go. Here's the last one to answer. Find the What is the number of elements in A union B? What's the number of elements in A union B? Well, let's think about this. First of all, the number of elements in A is what? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's th six things. The number of things in A is equal to six. How many things are in B? One, two, three, four, five. The number of things in B is five. Is the number of things in A union B just equal to the number of things in A plus the number of things in B? That would be what? Six plus five is 11. Are there 11 things in here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, there's only eight things in there. So apparently, it, the, the, the formula for this is not this simple. Why isn't it? Why isn't it? Again, this is hopefully something you've already done in class, but the answer you can tell just by looking at it. If you count up the things in A union B, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But if you counted the number of things in A, you got one, two, three, four, five, six of them. The number of things in B, you got one, two, three, four, five of them. The problem is we're counting these twice, right? We're counting them as part of A and we're counting them as part of B. So we're counting them twice. And so if you want the things in A union B, you'd have to take all of A plus all of B plus you'd want to subtract these things once because you want to include them once, but you just don't want to include them twice. So if you just get rid of the things that are in the intersection, then you should be good. So in other words, the answer is it's all the things in A, which is six of them, plus all the things in B, which is five of them, minus the things that are in both of them. There's three things that are in both of them. And so you get 11 minus three is, is eight. And, I, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight things total, okay? So no formulas you have to memorize. All you need to do is just know what, what those symbols mean, right? And those symbols come up lots in mathematics, so those are important to know. Okay, very good. So that was problems one through five right there. 
Okay, that was one through five on your practice, practice test. Okay, let's um, go on to uh, number six. Which of the following is incorrect? And there's eight of them here, and I won't write them all down at once. I'll just write them down one at a time. We want to find the one which is incorrect. And the first one says 2 plus 3 over 4 is equal to 2 over 4 plus 3 over 4. Okay? Well, of course, 2 plus 3 is 5, so that's 5 fourths. So it's really just saying, is it the case that 5 fourths is equal to 2 fourths plus 2 fourths? And the answer is yes. If you have two pizzas here, and this pizza is broken up into four pieces, and you have two of them, and then you have another pizza that's cut up into four pieces, and you have three of those, then how many how much pizza do you have total? You have one, two, three, four, five fourths. So yes, so you can just add the numerators together. The denominator stays four. It's, you're still talking about fourths of a pizza, but that's the case. So that is, I'll put a C there for that's correct. Okay, no problem with that. Here's the second one. Is it true that three plus five times the quantity 7 plus 9 is equal to 3 times 7 plus 3 times 9 plus 5 times 7 plus 5 times 9. Is that true? Is that how numbers work? Well, one way to figure this out is just to go ahead and multiply these together. The uh, 5, plus, uh, 5 plus 3 is 8. 8 times uh, uh, 7 plus 9 is 16. 16, 32, 64, 128. This I add, uh, multiplies to 128. And I'll just tell you, you can do it on your own. If you add all these up, that all them also multiplies to 128. So yes, the answer is correct. Um, just by uh, calculating them all out and adding them together, you're going to get the same answer on both sides. But how did I know that the answer was correct without even going through the work? It's because, if you remember from, hopefully again, what you've learned, you've learned the word foil. If you have something, the, 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 the sum of two things multiplied by the sum of two other things, the way you get the total product is to foil it out, which means you multiply the firsts. The first means the first here and the first there, three times seven. The outer, there's the outer one, here's the outer one, three times nine. I stands for inner, there's the two inner ones, five times seven. And finally, the last, the last one up here and the last one up here, five times nine. So, so that's correct, okay? So yes, using FOIL, we see that that's, that's also correct. Maybe the best way to see that this is correct, though, is just by understanding why it is that numbers multiply like this in the first place. Okay? If you have a big rectangle here, which is broken up into 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so there's, there it is. And now we have 7 plus 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I've got a little bit shorter right there. Okay. So if you do this to it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 like this, this is three right here, one, two, three, four, five, this is five right here, this is seven right here, and this is nine right there. So you see that three 
plus 5, which is 8, this plus 5, that gives you this whole length, times 7 plus 9, that gives you that whole length, that's going to give you the area of that big rectangle right there. Well, you can get that same area by breaking it up into four smaller rectangles. Here's a rectangle of size 3 by 7. Here's a rectangle 3 by 9. Here's a rectangle 5 times 7. And here's a rectangle 5 times 9. See that? So this one right here has has, if you were to break it up into little units, you would have 21 little blocks. This one right here would have 27 little unit blocks. This one right here would have 35 little blocks, and this one would have 45. So that's really why foil works the way it does, is because you're really just breaking it up into those four small rectangles which are part of a big rectangle. Okay, so the, the answer finally is uh, that one is also correct. Okay, what's the next one? Next one, I guess I'm going to have to get rid of some of this. says, is it the case that 2 over 3, 2 thirds, times 4 fifths is equal to 2 times 4 times, or I should say over, 3 times 5? Is that the way numbers work? If you have 2 thirds of 4 fifths, if you have 4 fifths of a pi and you take 2 thirds of that, are you going to end up with what? 8 fifteenths of a piece of pi? And the answer is yes. Okay, that's the way numbers work. If you have two things that are multiplied together like that, which are both fractions, you just go ahead and multiply the tops together and you just multiply the bottoms together. And that is exactly the right answer. So that is correct. So that one is correct. The next one asks a similar question about division. If you take two thirds and divide it by four fifths. Okay. I'm assuming you've you've seen this stuff before in your in your high school classes and so on. So not starting at ground zero here, but just reminding you that if you have one thing, one fraction divided by another, then what you do is you flip it over and multiply. So you just flip it over and multiply like that, and um, and once you do that then you just do the same thing as here. You're going to get 2 times 5 on top, and you're going to get 3 times 4 on the bottom, which would be 10 twelfths, or if you want to, you can write it as 5 6. Okay, point is those are all, those are all correct. Okay, so no problem with that. Here's the next one. Is it the case that 2 times the quantity 3 plus 4 is equal to 2 times 3 plus 2 times 4. Well, yeah, this is just a special case of that FOIL one. This is a special case where you only have one number there, but you can still um, think of it as a rectangle here. You have a rectangle here where you have 2 on this side, and here you've got 3, and then you've got 1, 2, 3, 4. So you've got 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3, 4. And so um, you can break it up and you can say yes. 2 times 7, this is 7 times 2 is 14, is equal to 6 plus 8, which just is the same thing as saying that 2 times 3, that's 6. You have 6 little blocks there, and you have 8 little blocks there. You add them together, you're going to get 14 blocks. So uh, if, if this is the first time you've seen that, it's going too fast, but hopefully um, this is all reminding you of stuff you already know. Okay, what's the next one? Next one says 2 over 3 plus 4 
is that equal to 2 over 3 plus 2 over 4? Well, we did something similar to that a moment ago. I just lost my computer. Let me just make sure that you're all still there. Yep, everything's still working. Okay, uh, we, we, we know that this was true. 3 plus 4 over 2 is equal to 3 over 2 plus 4 over 2. You can add the numerators like that. Can you, can you add the denominators? If, the, if this is the same 2, can I just add these? 3 plus 4 and put that on the bottom. Well, hopefully it doesn't take you long before you realize that's not, not true. If you have 2 thirds of a pie or of a pizza, you've got this much, right? If you have 2 fourths of it, you've got that much. If you have 2 sevenths of it, you've just got about that much, right? So this isn't as big as either one of these, let alone you add them together. Both of these are bigger than this one. And so when you add them together, no way can they, can they be equal. If you take the easiest possible case, is that equal to 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1? And the answer is obviously no, right? This is 1 over 2, whereas this is 1 plus 1, which is 2. 2 is not equal to 1 half. Okay, so that's, that's the one that's incorrect right there. Okay, we found it. Okay. Okay, we might as well go through these last two just to make sure that you see why they are correct, though. Okay. So the number G here says, what about this? 2 times the quantity, 3 times 4 times the quantity, 5 times 7, is that equal to 14 times the quantity, 5 times 4 times 3? One of the things that I realize a lot of students are sketchy on is they don't realize that in multiplication, you've got lots of liberty. When you are adding things, you got to be careful. But with multiplication, you can do it in any order you want to. So, so all these numbers are just being multiplied together. It doesn't matter which one you multiply by which. In this case, what did we do? We took the 2 times the 7 and we got the 14. And we were left with those 3. And you can put them in whatever order you want to. 5, 4, 3 is just fine. So that's fine. So that's, that's true. That's true. If you wanted to, you could say this is equal to, I don't care, let's just say 2 times 3 times 5. What's that? 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 5 is 30. So you can have 30. And what are you left with? 4, whoops, four times 7. Four times seven, so you can do that. Or if you want to, you can erase the four times seven and put 28 there, okay? It doesn't matter what order you, you do things in, when you're multiplying them, you can do them in whatever order you want, okay? So that is totally, totally true, okay? Here's the last one. This is a really important one. A times B equals zero means that either A equals zero or B equals zero. That may be both, but at least one of them has got to be zero. And the answer to this is an emphatic yes. Okay, when I'm teaching this stuff in my pre-calc course and so on, I tell my students, zero is your friend. If you have A times B is equal to, I don't care, 3, A and B could be just about anything. A could be equal to 17, um, uh, let's see, uh, let, let me say is equal to 3 over 17, and this is uh, 17, uh, 17 over 1, just as an example. And so these things multiply it to 3 even though these things are anything you want in the world, but they still multiply to 3. So they could be anything you wanted, okay? These could both be negative, okay? You could put a pi in here and a pi in there, okay? If you know what pi is, okay? All those things all multiply to 3. But as soon as you have two things that are equal to 0, 
you have no choice but that one of them has to be zero. One of them has to be zero. So that's why quite often in mathematics you have something like this. Let's see, let me just do it real quick. You'll have something like this. x squared minus 8x is equal to negative 15. And you have an equation like that, and you have no idea what the values of x are that make that true, because negative 15 is not your friend. But if you bring this over to the other side and put a plus 15 there, now you've got a zero. Now zero is your friend, so if you can find a way to factor this, which we'll be talking about later, you can write that as x minus 5 times x minus 3 is equal to zero, because this factors into this. In other words, if you use FOIL on this, look at it, if you use FOIL on it, first is going to be x times x is x squared. Outer is going to be a negative 3x. Inner is going to be a negative 5x. There's inner. And here's last is going to be a positive 15. See that? So when you FOIL this out, you're going to get x squared minus 8x plus 15 is equal to 0. So this is the same as this. The advantage of writing it like this is that now you have the product of two things is 0. 0 is your friend. So either x minus 5 has got to be 0 which means x is equal to 5, or x minus 3 has got to be 0, which means x is equal to 3. Okay, so uh, that's, that's why that's such an important point in mathematics. Okay, let's see. We're going to do uh, the first 8 here. So uh, how much time do we have? We're doing well. Let me, let me uh, ask the next one here. Which of the following is equal to... 7b. Which of the following is equal to 7b? And the first one says, add 7 to b. So is this the same as this? The second one says, b plus b plus b plus b plus b plus b plus b. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Is that 7b? Third one says b times b. Is that equal to 7b? The next one says a whole bunch of 7s and a whole bunch of b's with plus signs between all of them. Is that it? How about this one? B to the seventh power. How about this one? I'm running out of room here. 7B plus 4 divided by 4. Is that the case? And lastly, G is 3.5B times 3.5B. Is that equal to 7B? Okay, well, you know the answer? To have 7b, that just means I have 7 times b. It just means whatever b is, I've got 7 of those. If, if you owe someone $10 and you owe 7 people $10, how much money do you owe total? You owe $70, right? So how many people do you owe $10? You owe this person 10 plus this person and 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 this person. So all of these people, you owe $10. So there's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. So there you have 7B right there. That's what this stands for. 7B just means 7Bs. There you have it. You have 7Bs added together. It's not this. Here you're multiplying the numbers, so we need to have a mathematical expression for that as well. We do. That's called b to the seventh power. Okay? So that's seven 
time that's b times itself seven times okay so that's the same as this neither of those are equal to this we already know what the answer is there's the answer okay uh there's nothing in mathematics that says i can cancel those out so that's not the case okay it's not that if you were to multiply this out they're going to get 3.5 quantity squared times b times b because remember you can multiply any order you want to b times b is a b squared so uh so that's that's the right answer okay one more and then we're halfway done with the first test here number eight says simplify this expression the square root of 20 plus 5 times the square root of 45 and again remember what I said about multiplication with multiplication you can do lots of things with it in particular in particular here's what you can do with multiplication and division it's it is true that this is equal to this okay if you think about it suppose that a is equal to 4 and b is equal to 9 4 times 9 is what 36 agreed 4 times 9 is 36 the square root of 36 is 6 so that side would be 6 if you take the square root of 4 square root of 4 is 2 the square root of 9 is 3 sure enough 2 times 3 is equal to 6 so that's just one example that shows that you can you can do that you can also you can also break it up and write it like this with multiplication and division you can do lots of things like that okay that's true you can't do it with addition or subtraction but you can with multiplication so how can we handle this one let's first do this let's first write this as 4 times 5 do you agree that 4 times 5 is equal to 20 and I'm going to write this as 5 times 9 do you agree that 5 times 9 is equal to 45 so that's true now I'm going to make use of this fact and I'm going to write this as the square root of 4 times the square root of 5 plus 5 times the square root of 5 times the square root of 9 okay I'm making use of the fact that you can just multiply those things together okay now what is the square root of 4 that's 2 what's the square root of 9 that's 3 remember when you're multiplying things it doesn't matter what order you multiply them in so you got that so now I have 2 times the square root of 5 plus 15 times the square root of 5 so how many square roots of 5 do I have 15 plus 2 of them if you want to you can think of it like this you're factoring out the square root of 5 and you're left with 15 plus 2 all times the square root of 5 so that's equal to 17 times the square root of 5 okay so this is the kind of thing you just need to know how numbers work okay you need to know that um, that um, that you can do this sort of thing with with square roots um, okay very good so let's stop right there and uh, we'll start with problem number nine on the next on the next YouTube video.